My name is Fabiola Leon Velarde. I am a physiologist working in uh, the field of high altitude physiology the uni at the University Cayetano Heredia in Lima, Peru. But also we have a, a very important laboratory in Cerro de Pasco at uh, 4300 meters. So at, in this laboratory we have been able to work in, in several research projects related to how animals and men and women adapt to high altitude. For many years we have uh, dealing with trying to understand the processes of adaptation to high altitude which are quite different between animals and uh, men and women. Uh, in this um, in this uh, Congress, I have been talking about chronic mountain sickness in particular because my group also um, usually uh, have been working in, uh, in trying to understand the two main diseases at high altitude, chronic mountain sickness or Monge's disease and pulmonary high altitude hypertension. In this particular event, I have uh, talked about, uh, I have made an overview about chronic mountain sickness, who has been discovered here in Peru in 1921. So, um, this uh, sickness or syndrome is um, related to the loss of adaptation to life at high altitude. And its main and outstanding sign is excessive hydrocytosis. What happens with these uh, patients, it's like that they have forgotten to breathe in the way that you should breathe at high altitude. Uh, it means that you have to increase your ventilation and your respiratory uh, drive at high altitude. These, these persons do not breathe as they should do and they um, have an, uh, um, blood hypoxemia so they develop excessive hydrocytosis. So uh, we tried all these years to understand the pathophysiology of this syndrome um, and we have studied the causes which is a primary hypoventilation mainly because of disturbation in the uh, control for the central control for the CO2 and um, also for a disturbance in a relation of the soluble receptor of erythropoietin and the availability of erythropoietin. Um, so I have explained that also the risk factors because if you become hypoxemic at high altitude from any cause you will develop chronic mental sickness but in this case secondary chronic mental sickness. These risk factors are age, um, being uh, in menopause because you do not produce enough progesterone so you decrease your ventilation. Um, another risk factor is chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and uh, if you being male if you have an excessive of testosterone. Also I have developed the new concept of erythropoietin availability and two kinds of uh, patients responded to hypoxia. The very, um, very uh, responsive to hypoxia, like the, uh, ep ep we call the erythropoietin phenotype, which higher EPO availability and very, very high hemoglobin that could be higher than 26 gram per deciliter. And also we have described the other um, normal EPO chronic mental sickness patients compared with the healthy Highlanders. At the end also we have tried to, to understand also if there is some genetic basis. For the moment this, this is a field that is really exploding because we are going to, we, what we would like to find is the, the genes which can cause the the adaptation and not the gene for adaptation like other researchers have found in Tibet. And finally, we have talked about the treatment for the moment, the, the main treatment with acetosolomide, which 
acidifies the blood and increase ventilation, so decrease the main sign of chronic mental signature, which is excessive hydrocytosis. So this was uh, my small overview that uh, because we want that uh, all the searchers in the world get interested for, for this neglected disease, which is chronic mountain sickness. Mm -hmm.